Water. Hmm. Flow of life. Water. As the, as the drops of water <laughs> start to fall here. <laughs> oh, water. Water is, a, is a, a using ourselves. Water is that emotional connection. We're on that a little bit with the heart and with uh, the fire element. But water is the part where there's a flow, there's a fluidity there. And when we're born, we're like 99% water. I always say that you know, we're born with a, a young little baby, a few months old, it's just a puddle of water. And as we go through life, there's a drying up that's happening. There's a drying up that's happening. Um, as, as adults, we're around, what, 70, 75, 80% water. As you get older and older, you're down to 60, 50% water. So the more we can actually hold on, not hold on, but to allow the water to keep flowing in here. And when I say water, it's not how much you're drinking, it's how much your body is retaining that water essence. Um, so that we stay fluid. And when you think of water, it is emotions. The emotion, there's motion. Mm -hmm. And the water element supports that. So the water element very closely, very, is tied to the emotion of the body, the emotional realm of. And when we stay in that watery state of expressing who we are, and on the physical level, the watery part, the more water you are, the more useful you are. The more regeneration, the more healing is happening. It creates the microclimates in our body. You know, the pools, the ponds, the, uh, the little waterfalls that are happening inside us. So that's why people, when they think of cleansing and fasting, is usually think of juicing and smoothies and broths or drinking a lot more water mm -hmm. to stay healthy because every single system in our body has to be fluid. So every single disease is a hardening. It's a hardening because there's lack of absorption. So that's the key thing is how much are you actually absorbing our water? Not how much you drink, it's how much did you actually absorb. Mm -hmm. And if you can't absorb your water, it's gonna be that much harder to absorb your, your food and needs. Um, yeah, I could definitely go on and on with water. It's um, it's precious, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's an element that's really been abused and polluted obviously on the planet. And the, the reverence and respect for water, or actually for any of the elements, has sort of been lost. Mm -hmm. And our uh, ancient ancestors, they had that reverence. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Earth. Mm. Well, Earth that we stand upon. Without Earth, it'd be hard for us to be upright and standing. It connects to the bones, to the, the density of who we are, our nails, our teeth, our, our hair. Um, the earth to me is, is one of the most sacredest things because we're all on an earth path, walking this earth. And how to connect with our ecological self of who we are. How to, to, to me, one of the things that people ask, you know, what do you guys grow at the Living Center? And I always tell all of the apprentices, all the students that come here, we grow only one thing, is to grow soil. If you can't grow and you can't have that topsoil growing, you're not really in a regenerative um, culture. So when people talk about sustainability, it's like, I don't want to make me to be the same. I want, I want fertility of the soil to grow. So to allow fertility to grow, so that's my biggest passion as a, as a nutritionist and as a gardener is if I can have soil growing, there's regeneration. With that regeneration, those plants now have even more life. If those plants have more life, then our body's going to have more life. So as the outer landscape out here is the one that's shaping in here. Mm -hmm. So being a part of a regenerative and creating a resilience in, uh, in well-being is important. So it's like when, you know, the garden we're standing in, did I create this garden or did this garden create me? You know, who, who is actually creating who? And the thing is, how much this soil has changed in this garden? I mean, in the early days when I moved here, I couldn't do Soil has grown and the microplastic has grown, it can use now to grow things that weren't before. If I couldn't, and how much gentler it is here, like you can hear the wind in the background, right here, where we're standing, very gentle. Um, so, with soil, it's a longer term process of really building it or allowing it to build by itself or to create a process. In our inner body, our inner body is really important. You know, I think you've heard me say this before. I've done thousands of hair analysis for people. You can sample hair, you can put it in 
analyzed with their analysis and that everyone, all of us, has an interest in this. How do we capture those interests in this? How do we bring them in? And it, it's a lot of deep absorption there that happens. So it's not just eating the food, it's not just eating even just organic food. It's how do you go deeper to more the wild plants that have these trace minerals to allow us to build us. And if that if those trace minerals come in here and we're more in alignment with our original constitution, that means we start acting back to alignment so um, that's why I call it regenerative. Re re allowing regeneration to happen compared to cancer because it's a regenerative process mm -hmm. and it just keeps on um, evolving and growing. So it takes deep listening of which elements I need more of right now to really honor and give respect and grow and gratitude to each of the elements. And just let them do that. Let them do the transformation and support us. So we know we need them to take out any element we're dead. Right. So we need those in the, it's the right proportion. Mm -hmm. And I think the key word there is transformation. That's right. And, and it, it is a foundation for alignment and for healing, but it's also about that personal transformation, transformation mm -hmm. of consciousness, yeah. and you know, kind of transformation outside of ourselves. Yeah. Right? Change starts from within us. Mm -hmm. But it, it begins to transform our relationships, our immediate relationships, mm -hmm. our environment, mm -hmm. and then our communities. Mm -hmm. And through that change, then we can see, you know, kind of more of the, the, the big perspective yes. of change. Or hope, you know, hopefully yeah. we do. Yeah. But um, it, it is that key to transformation. Mm -hmm. And and you know, there's there's a introspection that has to happen. Mm -hmm. There's an alignment that has to happen with the elements. But a, a deeper understanding that you know we are. We're not just this flesh and bone. There's something else going on yes. inside of us. And and as we align and understand that, then you know, other transformations happen. Yeah. I want to add one more piece. You said it happens from within, and I agree. Mm -hmm. But it's also happening from outside. The outer landscape is actually creating who you are. Right. And, so, and that's why we call it the ecological self. There is no outer and inner. So that the more beauty I have around me, the more I've been changed and now behaving differently. Now that I'm different, I'm now interacting with that landscape differently. And it, it's almost like this, this is what's happening. Who's creating who? So what we've done to the planet, people are behaving differently. But if there's more beauty, more nature, more abundance, just in here, because the only way to change and transform this landscape in here is by the outer landscape. But our inner landscapes also are, so this is dance between inner and outer. So this might be the seed here, but the seed can only be as healthy as what the terrain is. You can have an amazing terrain, but you don't have a fertile seed, then that doesn't work. So you can see the two together. Thank you You're very welcome. much. You're welcome. Pleasure.